Deepwater oil rigs are extremely dangerous places to work. They're taller than some of the highest skyscrapers on land and are designed to face the worst hurricanes at sea. But how do they get to the middle of the ocean? And what training do offshore workers do? Let's find out. Welcome to Explained. Offshore oil rigs extract petroleum and natural gas from the ocean floor. They're some of the largest structures on the planet. Some deep sea rigs are as heavy as 200 million kilos and can reach depths of 2,500 to 3,000 meters. That's three times the size of the Burj Khalifa. So how do these skyscrapers get to the middle of the ocean? Simply put, first, they build the base of the rig onshore, then the drilling infrastructure and living quarters are assembled on top of it. And finally, the rig is towed out to the drill site. The type of rig being used is also crucial, and this depends on if it's just drilling or extracting as well, how deep the sea is, and how bad the weather gets in the area. Offshore rigs take weeks or months to get to the drilling location, which is often on the other side of the globe. And this is no ordinary journey. Shell's Appomattox, one of the biggest oil platforms in the Gulf of Mexico, made one such epic voyage. The base was built in South Korea, while the drilling infrastructure had to be assembled on it in the US. It literally traveled 23,335 kilometers, crossing three oceans on one of the largest transport ships on the planet. But this wasn't some calm, luxurious cruise. The Appomattox had to outrun a super typhoon in the Pacific Ocean, survive the rough winter waters around the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa, and narrowly avoid Hurricane Harvey that hit the US. Four hurricane. This is going to go up the coast. When it reached the Gulf of Mexico, it weighed as much as a space shuttle. And the final challenge was lowering it hundreds of meters to the seafloor to connect it to the subsea oil station. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Life is tough on these offshore rigs. And there's a reason why offshore workers make as much as $305,000 a year. The job requires high precision and drill workers are usually highly qualified petroleum or mechanical engineers. They also have to pass the basic offshore safety induction and emergency training. And this isn't easy. Workers learn how to escape off an oil platform. They learn helicopter escape drills. Survival at sea. basic firefighting and first aid. Besides this, working hours are long and tiring. And while the living quarters are comfortable and the entertainment zones help relieve stress, the isolation at sea for weeks and months can take a toll on mental health. But there's little room for error on the job. Mistakes in this workplace can be deadly for everyone on board. The worst offshore rig disaster in history was Piper Alpha. This rig was designed to produce oil, but later on, the company decided to include natural gas production as well. On July 6, 1988, disaster struck. A series of gas explosions ripped through the oil platform, which wasn't designed or equipped to handle gas-related accidents. The rig collapsed into the North Sea and 167 people were killed. Nature can be brutal out in the ocean, Offshore rigs encounter hurricanes and icy weather. Floating semi-submersible rigs that drill at depths of 500 to 3,500 meters get tossed around by massive waves. Rigs encounter water sprouts, and they're at risk of being slammed into by nearby ships in bad weather. Then there's the chance of an unexpected surge in natural gas that can lead to disasters like Deepwater Horizon. So regular maintenance of pipelines are crucial and any repairs must be carried out immediately. And if it's being done manually by a diver, there's always the chance of encountering dangerous marine life like sharks. Offshore rigs that are maintained well can last 40 years and at the end of their service, they must be safely disposed. The wells are sealed off, the workers are sent back to shore, and the top platform is removed. Engineers cut through the foundation that linked the top platform to the base. Then, an even bigger ship is commissioned to lift it intact 
and carry it to the scrapyard on shore for dismantling. The last leg of the journey must be carefully planned because any miscalculations can result in catastrophes like this. Offshore oil rigs are constantly surrounded by controversy. And while they've been in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons, there's no doubt that these deep sea giants are marvels of engineering. Have you ever seen an offshore rig up close? Have you ever been on one? Tell us about your experience in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to Explained.